Hi everyone, I wanna thank you for joining me here. Um, Unhealthy is my passion. I was here and thinking, and I was just reflecting and it came to my mind to bring, this, bring up this topic, you know, about what does it mean to have a relationship with God? What does it really mean to have a relationship with God? And can we have a relationship with God? So many times we hear others say, don't question God. God is God, don't question God. We aren't. We aren't, we, are, we were created by him. It's not our, our place to question God. I am here to say, we should ask, if somebody should say that, we should ask them, what exactly do they mean by do not question God? We need to be willing and boldly ask questions because sometimes a person might say don't question God or don't do something and their meaning doesn't necessarily match what we comprehend what they're saying to be it may seem like some people is flat out it means don't question God but the person might have maybe thinking along the lines of not flat out, don't question God. So we need to be ready to ask questions as in anything, as in any job or any, any relationship, anything that we may have, we need to be prepared to ask questions, you know, ask more questions to get clarity, to clarify things. And we need to start practicing asking questions, more questions to make sure that we do have a clear picture and that we understand what is being said. Because somebody can say something and we may take it for what it literally sounds like, but the person has other intentions and they aren't clearly clarifying or explaining what they mean. Some people, they may want you to ask questions. Some may be like, oh, I don't have the time to explain. But it is our job, our duty to ask questions. Because as we look in the world, we see there's so much going on because people just aren't asking questions. We aren't conversing. So, you know, when we talk about having a relationship with God, a relationship is built on trust, conversation, of course. We have to converse, very big, very big and key factor. We have to converse in order for us to build trust. We have to get a clear understanding of what's being said. And now, before I go any further, I want to share the scripture because it is such an important scripture. Now, this scripture is taken from Matthew 10, from the Holy Script, our Holy Bible, of course, Matthew 10, and this is the New International Version I am reading from. So now this happened when Jesus was given his disciples' instructions. And in Matthew 10, verse 7, he said to them, as you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. And I want you to focus on this one. This is verse 8. Freely you have received, freely give. Freely you have received, freely give. <laughs> God is such a good God. And I want to base today's 
topic on freely you have received, freely give, having a relationship with God. Now, I look around society and I, after conversing with various individuals and also studying and, you know, as I learn from life's experiences, from my studying, my knowledge, from revelations that I've received, um, you know, I, I look and I see, I examine society, I examine my life, I examine, you know, from conversations and from observations. I examine the world, others' lives. We learn from each other. And conversations are not being had. And part of the problem where why we're in the situation where we're at today with wars, rumors of wars, you know, all this happening. Yes, the Bible talks about it, that these must come. And we are definitely at that point. We had a great fall in a way. And all of this must happen before Jesus' return, we understand. But while it is while it is playing out, we all have a role to contribute to, 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 to basically contribute to God's kingdom. We all have a story to tell, right? We all have lived life, whether you live life and you're able to speak and you are three years old, you're four years old, you're five years old, you're in your 50s, your 60s, 20s, 30s, 40s, 100. <laughs> we all have a story. And the thing is, the story isn't being shared enough. The story of God's goodness in our life. So now we, we, we talk about what's a relationship. What's a relationship? So now I mentioned that relationship, relationship is built on trust. But how can we build trust if we don't have an understanding? And how can, can we have an understanding if we don't have conversations and respectful conversations at that? And sometimes we may have conversations and we seem like we're angry. But the thing is, we need to spend the time in explaining why. The problem is that people are saying things and they're speaking and they're willing to listen nor to explain themselves. And it just leads to a whole lot of problems and issues. So relationship, having a relationship Relationship is relationship is something that we have that two or more person have together, okay? It's, it's the way in which we're connected. People are connected. State of being connected. And the relationship I'm talking about is is where we're connected and relationship is, can be huge. It can, it can encompass relationships such as marriage, relationship such as by blood or relationship just by being connected. And this is the relationship I'm talking about, being connected, the state of being connected. So when the state of being connected can be applied to marriage, it can be applied to blood relatives, it can be applied to God. But today we're going to specifically focus on our relationship with God. And it, and it can be applied to any relationship we have today that we're going to talk about. So now when we talk about relationship with God, 
and some say we have no right to question God is God. I am here to tell you that God wants us to come first with him. God doesn't just want to say, do this and expect us being made in his, created in his image to just go out and blindly do stuff. He created us. God is a thinking God. He's a reasoning God. He's a God who learns. He's a God who teaches. He's a God who has created us and is great in a very single aspect of life. So when we see we're behaving a certain way, is because we're created in his image. We're thinking, reasoning beings. So now we look and we, we read the Bible, for instance, and we some of us just get up and you know, when we read the Bible, there's a lot that is that has been that has not been included in the Bible, in the Holy Bible as we have it. And there's a lot that possibly may have been added to the Bible as well as we're learning as time goes by. And as we read Revelations, I believe it's Revel the last book in Revelation. I think it's Revelation 20. Well, let me verify that. Let me verify that. So give me a moment. Revelation 20. Let me look that up quick for you because this is very important. And I want you guys to Grab your Bibles in the meantime as well. Um, if you read in, if you're reading your Bible from from a digital device, go ahead, grab it, and let's let's go ahead and read, guys. So now I've got Revelation and. Revelation 22. Okay, so, so the last book of the Bible is Revelation 22. So Revelation 22. So now when I say that there's a lot that hasn't been included in our Bible. For what reason, I don't know. But there is, it's possible that other information has been added in the Bible that, that was not meant to be added in the Bible, okay? As we know, our Bible has been passed on. It's been translated by... It's been translated time and time again. And as we know, as things get translated, sometimes words might be translated and have a different meaning than what they originally meant in the original tongue. So now I want us to look at Revelation 22, verse 19. This is very important. Revelation 22, verse 19. To tell, to show you why I said that there are certain, certain things that have, that weren't included in the Bible, and that certain things may have been added. So, if you read for yourself, Revelations twenty-two verse nineteen, it says, "And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life." and from the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. Now, some may argue that this is only referring to the prophecy of Revelation. But honestly, I believe that this was given by God as a warning. Now, we know that a lot may not have been added to a Bible. And as we study, we see that a lot has been excluded from our Bible. 
And God sends this as a warning because he must have seen that, well, people will omit certain information and people will add certain information, whether it be for, for um, to keep people subservient or they may omit certain information, keep people sub, sub, subservient to keep them lacking knowledge. And they, same way they may have added stuff to keep people subservient, to keep them, you know, passive. So after reading this, we realized that, yeah, it makes sense that, well, we don't have all the information. If you read the Bible, the entire Bible, I'm not talking about pieces of the Bible. I'm talking read the whole Bible. You start to ask questions. You say, okay, why is it that we have this information? We don't have the full picture. You know, there's so many questions I've been asked time and time again, generation after generation. And people, some people don't have the answers because they aren't seeking, they aren't reading. And for a long time, a lot of information was withheld from us. We didn't have people sharing information like we're freely sharing now. Now, when we have a relationship with God, we converse with him, we ask questions. We look at, we look at in, at our patriarchs. We look at those before us. We look at Abraham. We look at Sarah. We may look at Isaac. We look at a wife. So we look at, we, we may look at Rebecca. We look at all these individuals in the Bible. And now we look at Abraham and Sarah. Let's examine them. When God told Abraham to get up and leave his hometown, town, where he's from and everything, and told him to move to a different place. He took everything he had and he moved. But we're like, he just moved like that. And we're like, he's so obedient and the Bible. And if we hear he's referred to as a friend, um, but we don't have the whole picture. So now after studying further, we see that Yes, he moved in obedience, but there was a lot that was happening in his life that confirmed that God wanted him to move. Abraham's father, there was a lot happening in Abraham's life. Abraham did a lot of things because he saw that his family they were worshiping idols and it angered him because he, he knew the word of God has been passed down, not like his father. Tira didn't have all this information. He had it. He knew about it. But Abram had this desire in him to serve the Lord. And how do we get this desire to serve the Lord? It has to be given to us by God. And now we hear Oh, um, we come to God, only those who are called by God come to him. And first, we are called by God in order to really have the desire. Now, people may say, but the reason why I'm doing all this stuff must mean that God didn't call me. So I'm, God don't love me enough. If you have the desire to serve God, God is such a merciful God. And you ask God. That's why we need a, we're talking about conversation, relationship here. You ask God, God, show me the way. God, let me hear your voice. And when I hear your voice, let me know it's you speaking. God, I want to serve you. Show me how to be a better person. Show me how to serve you in spirit and in truth. Show me how to do your will. And he will answer you if you earnestly mean what you're asking him, God will show you. Now, 
we look and we we are like we look up to other people you know and we're like oh they're a pastor they're this they're that um they're perfect we can't they have to be perfect because they're pastor everybody's human being we're all human being nobody's perfect pastors have had their share of time where they have been the most worst some of them have committed the worst crimes the worst things that you can think of some of them not all of them but the thing is they have a story they have overcome god has been with them and god have guided them and have brought them out of it and they have dedicated their life to god but it still doesn't mean that they they, they don't go through testing the higher you get up with god the more you climb that ladder, ladder closer to God, the tests keep coming and coming and coming. It never stops until we reach that point where we're with Jesus in heaven. It never stops coming. Satan, Satan doesn't rest. He works endlessly to try and hinder any and everyone from reaching that glory point being with jesus making it into heaven okay so although we may look up to others who preach and you know you you, you got to understand that while we're living on earth we're still human beings we make mistakes we fall short we're all human beings we're all trying to reach that common goal and that's to reach heaven to be with jesus you know be with god and there are tests that come up and we constantly have to stay under the wing of god we all do if we want to make it in we have to open up our ears open our knowledge we have to feed ourselves with spiritual things which are good we have to be obedient to god and sometimes we are beaten to God and we fall and then, you know, we, we get back up and we start going, running back to God. And, you know, it takes some time to work our way, but God is such a merciful God. The good thing about God is that, hey, he came down to earth and walked among us. So he knows he's more merciful now after he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to walk the earth. So now Jesus is there interceding on our behalf. He has walked the earth and he knows how it is, how difficult it is, how testing it is, how our flesh wants to serve God. But, you know, there's this conflict. There's this peer pressure. There's so much in the world that, you know, it's like, trying to hinder us from making it to God, to, to God. Some people, they'd be like, oh, Christians aren't fun. They're so boring. I hear one person say they're so boring. They just want to sing gospel music and, you know, being a rocking chair. I'm like, please, no. The Christian life is so fulfilling. We don't need to be like the world, you know. And, you know, sometimes people see a Christian struggling and they're like they just want to knock them over you know hey i see i heard you listening to this music i heard you yeah we have we have the times that we go through stuff and we're trying to find our way we're trying to understand things and you know don't just come and be like hey you know you sinned yesterday that's the devil using you to speak to to another person that's that's working their way up to god that's going through struggle every every everything that we go through is a learning point it's a learning point and we can take from that and build you know build and move higher you know but as we as god give us life we start to learn more about human nature human nature and human nature is this thing where we have this 
we tend to have this negativity at times. You know, some people, they're like, well, you know, this happened, it must be so, it must be that. That's why we need to conversate. We need to get an understanding from each other what's happening. So now when we have a relationship with God, it's okay to question God. We look at Abraham and look at Sarah. When they were when they were traveling and they were sojourning and they were moving, Abraham and his wife moving and he moved everything he had. And they were in a country that they don't know the people. Abraham got scared and his wife was beautiful. Okay, Sarah was beautiful. And when he reached his country, he looked at her and he's like, oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. If they wanna, if they see her, they're gonna wanna take her and they're gonna wanna kill me. That was Abraham's line of thinking. They're gonna wanna kill me and take my wife. So he said to Sarah, hey, tell them that you're my sister if anyone asks. And Sarah, you know, when the people saw Sarah, they basically, you know, Sarah's reply and Abraham's reply was, she's my sister. Was Abraham lying? No, he wasn't. They took Sarah and, you know, um, God plagued these people, plagued them all, you know, with a whole lot of plague. And, you know, the king eventually came to Abram and said, hey, what, what is this? I, I, this, this? What have you done? You know, Abram confessed that this is his wife. And he said, she is my sister indeed because she's my mother's, you know, she's my mother's daughter, but she's not my, she's my half sister. Basically explained that she's his half sister. So back in those days, you know, family used to, used to mix with family, you know, and that was back in the day. You know, some people, they're like, oh, they used to do, you know, hey, hey, the world is big enough. We don't know they have this thing called incest. You know, things have changed. Everybody on the face of the earth, we're all family. We all came from family mixing with family okay so every single person what caucasian negroes you name it we're all family indians we're all family we are all blood relatives and we're all distant relatives you see what i'm saying so and you know this can be another topic i'm not gonna fear away and really go into details about that so we're going to focus on relationship. Now, when we have a, a relationship with God, we conversate with him. Now, if God tells you to do something, it won't necessarily make sense the first time he tells us to do it. It won't necessarily make sense the first time he tells us to do it. For example, say, for instance, you have an opportunity to really strike it rich. Let's put it that way. You have an opportunity where you can make millions of dollars, right? And then God come to you and say, and you have another opportunity where you can make a hundred thousand as opposed to millions of dollars. And God said, take the hundred thousand opportunity first thing will come to our mind is Ooh, wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute i remember we're talking about conversating right now so we start to conversate with god we start to rationalize things we're like okay god now look i know we live in our earth father god and i know for us to be more influential you want us to be rich god because when we're more influential the world gravitates towards that they want to see that you're making money that you are that you're truly that we're truly a child god are you gonna tell me to take less money you know if i'm making millions of dollars look i can 
I can do so much more for your kingdom. I can do so much more for your kingdom, God. I can do more for those around me, my family. I can do more for your kingdom with more money. Why tell me to take the hundreds of thousands of dollars as opposed to the millions of dollars, God? It makes sense, God, what you're saying to me. You see, that's the good thing about God. We can conversate. And, you know, the good thing about God is when he sees you're doing this and he sees your heart and that, well, you want to you wanna pour into his kingdom. God, we need to understand that God knows more than us. He knows our future. He knows what the future holds. And he knows what our choices will lead to. So now when we're conversating with God, God, God will come. He'll spend the time with you because he loves you. He'll come and he'll give an explanation of why. He will explain in detail why to help you to see. And it's for us to trust him and to say, God, okay, it, um, it makes sense, your explanation, of course. And it's for us to make the decision whether he gives us a choice. It's up to make us to make the choice as to whether we're going to be obedient to God and do what he is guiding us to do, what he's teaching us and telling us to do, what he's guiding us to do, you know, because he knows what is ahead. So when we have a relationship, we can't first say it. We can't ask God why you know explain ourselves why we're asking why and god will answer he'll spend the time and explain it to us it's for us to open up our hearing our understanding and our hearts he, god speaks out loud like i'm speaking to you now audibly like you're hearing me and god also speaks to us silently in our spirit that's for us to be calm and ready to hear it. he speaks to our hearts he speaks to our minds. He speaks to us in our spirit, silently in our spirit as well. That's why it's important that we ask God, God, let us know when you're speaking, because the devil also tries to mimic God's voice, especially when you see that you're a child of God and you're trying earnestly to hear from him, hear from God. So, you know, just pray that God will let you know and understand when he's speaking to you. When he's speaking to your heart, to your spirit, when he's speaking to you, ask him to let me know, let you know his voice. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. And when they hear my voice, they know my voice. And I want to leave a couple of scriptures with you guys for, um, for you to know you know, for you to look through and read for yourself. I always say get a hardcover Bible and also get the lost books of the Bible, The Great Rejected Text by Joseph Lumpkin. I'll have the description below to make it easy for you guys to find that. You know, um, I know people might say, oh, I can listen to it on Audible. Uh, great, listen to it on Audible, but also get yourself a hard copy. You know, having things digitally, it's good to have it, you know, while you're on the go to really reference it. Um, but it's also better to have a hard copy. It's not the same reading something on a digital format as it is reading a hard copy. It's not the same as being able to easily flip through a page with a hard copy. It's not as easy to, to scroll through stuff when you have it digitally it's best to have a hard copy it's good if you can have both you know digital as a backup but um digital it will never never override um hard copy just like digital the robots and digital this digital can never replace human beings can never can never replace us. Computer is never smarter than us. Something we create can never be better than us, just like how we can never be better nor greater than God who created us. It's never greater nor smarter than the creator itself. So that's 
So now let's go on to, I want to share um, Romans 5 verse 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And Revelation 3 verse 20. I want you guys to really try and memorize this scripture. Revelation 3 verse 20. It says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the, the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. You see, God wants to have a relationship with, with us. He's at the door knocking right now. If you hear his voice, just open that door. Open the door. You let Jesus in. He isn't going to tear the door down. He isn't going to kick it down. He's knocking and he's waiting for you to let him in. And also Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That is Hebrews 11 verse 6. And John 1 verse, John, 1 John 1 verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Guys, I want you guys to know that God is a merciful God. He's a merciful God. He's a very forgiving God. He's way more merciful than we ever thought him to be. I've realized that. And all I say is, if you reach a point where you feel like giving up, you feel like there's no purpose to your life. You feel like you're alone. God is right there waiting for you to speak to him, speak to him, invite him, invite him into your life so that you can speak with him. And he can speak with you. With. Notice it isn't too anymore it's with speak with each other so thank you for listening guys do subscribe like and share this video with others so that they may know that god loves them jesus loves them and do hit the notification bell to be notified whenever I release new content such as this. And thank you so much for watching.